you there. Thank you for watching, and welcome to Forge Alliance Forever today. I have a 5v5 custom match here on the most amazing Roxas map generator. Let's go ahead and introduce our teams and our players. Starting off with Team 1 here in the Northeast, ending with Team 2 in the Southwest. Starting off with the front Southeastern player of Scorpy. He's going first land as a Cybern. He is a 1600 in Pac-Man Yellow. In Ruby Red Tours, Northwest is Fendeed going first air. He is a Cybern. Very interesting choice going first air, not first land. He is a 1500, and again, he is in Ruby Red. To the Northwest, we have the Aeon player of SSX Knee going first land. He is a 1500 as well, and he is in orange to color orange. And running up the front line for Team 1 is Paragon going first land as an Aeon. Definitely uh, fits his name going as an Aeon. He is a 1600 in glow in the dark green. And in the rear guard slot here for Team 1 is Snog. He is a 2,000 rated player, the highest rank on Team 1, and highest rank in the game overall. He is an Amethyst Purple, and he is going first to land. So for Team 1 side of the map, there are only Aeon and Cybern, three Aeon and two Cybrans to be exact, which means Team 1 does not have access to UEF or Seraphim Technology. Starting off with Team 2's Western North player. It is Zebranog going first line. He is a Seraphim. He is a 1700. Tied for the highest rank on his team with everyone but one player. And again, he is in Chevy Crimson. To his southeast is Parappa the Rap. Gonna call him the Rap for short. He is a UEF. He's going first line. And he is in Batman Gray as another 1700. In. Tropical Ocean Blue is a Cybern player, a Brittle. He's going first air as a 1300, and he is again going first air. And the last player for Team 2's front line is Ched, going first line second air as a Seraphim. He is a 1700 in Regal Purple, and again, he is a Seraphim. And the regular I saw here for Team 2, it is the 1700 of Land King going first line second air. He is in Stitch Blue. And he is a UEF. So for Team 2 side of the map, they have one Cybern, two Seraphim, and two UEF, which means Team 2 does not have access to Aeon technology. Team 1 does not have access to Seraphim or UEF technology. And for 10 players to scoop up a reclaim, let's see how much is there for them to said scoop up. 13,000 is definitely a decent amount. 1.3k mass per player. A lot of it actually... There's not really a high concentration of mass. It's just kind of just everywhere. So our players will be fighting over all of that mass. And, of course, the all-important Mex point layout. Let's take a look at Team one side of the map. One, two, three, four, five quad mech positions on Team one side of the map. One for each of the players. And there is a Tramex position in the northeast corner of the map, which probably means that the rear guard airsoft player of Snog will get both this quad mechs and this trimex, boosting his eco to get to T3 air as fast as possible. And for mex point contention points, we have, I'd say, the plateaus most definitely, since they are in the central line of the map, and there are the six mixes in the middle. I highly doubt we'll see one team grab these two, one team grab these two. It probably will be a lot of attacks from all different directions trying to grab the central point on the map and with that out of the way let's go ahead and see what our players are getting after we do see movement here from both teams moving to the central line we do see three players on team one going in that direction brittle moving a little bit forward going for a couple of mexes on his way to the middle as well as lincoln going straight down as well and zebra not going north we do see one movement or two excuse me and three so I can't I can't see orange today for some reason. It is SS next here in the Midwest position. We see the record air up player Snog moving forward as well as Finn D does start to move and Scorpy already close to his quad mix position. So a little bit ahead of his mirror to the northwest of Zebranog. So team one will have a slight advantage in that regard, and they are getting some units moving out. There is a transport going out here for Ched, so he's gonna try to drop some units on this upper plateau. Looks like there's another transport outbound here from Brittle as well. So two players on Team 2 going for this uh, plateau section of the map. There are a couple of other plateaus that our players can group uh, can grab, but they're firmly locked in Team 1 and Team 2's territory, respectively. 
And a lot of use of, of course, the flares and the scouts, so the Team 1 Assault Bots and the Land Scouts, get a nice little view of what's going on. Usually I see that in lieu of a player moving with their own comm. They just want to get some intel online. It does look like that transport does get shot down, but it already dropped its engineers off, so not a huge issue there. It does look like... The second transport was killed off. I don't... No, it's right here. Looks like they actually landed here. So it looks like they diverted a little bit northward. There is a distance build here for Scorpio trying to deny this position here for Chad. But Chad is going for a second land facility. This position will be held realistically fine here for Team 2. And Team 2 has the slight advantage as well in the middle now with the distance... Not distance, but the drop from Brittle. It looks like they're going to be very conservative here with their frontline production going for this position instead of going all the way here for it. Definitely the better way to do it just due to the fact they don't want to lose all of that production and mass investment early, early on in the middle. It does look like it's just a lot of interceptor fight here between the both teams. Kind of just hanging out in the southeastern section of the map. Not really a huge issue. It does look like just constant interceptors fighting back and forth. Looks like Team 2 has a slight advantage in that. But again, interceptors are more... They're not the most important thing. It is nice to have some early on for go after bombers or early, early gunships if you're a Cybran or fighting a Cybran, but for the most part, it's not really that important to have the Interceptor War 1. It's mainly important to get to T3 Air, which surprisingly, Snog hasn't even started his T2 upgrade. Team 2's Lincoln has started his, so he's getting his uh, nice and squared away. Gun damage range, gun speed and range has been started here for Finn Deed in the middle. T2 going for the wrap in the middle. So one being a little more offensive, one being a little bit more defensive. Does make sense, of course, because one is UEF and one is Cybern. We do see Zebra Nog to the north just pushing back Team 1's Paragon. Paragon now approaching the front line here. This facility will eventually be taken out. Zog's going to get a little bit of efficiency going after the Aurora, of course, the things that can shoot at him. Also tries to deny the T1 PD that was under construction so that no one comes and finish its construction off. No way it's not a hindrance for him. We do see that land fight in the southeast on this upper plateau. It's going the way of Team 2's Chad. It's two facilities versus essentially five now. That's going to go Team 2's way. Team 1 probably should just divest and go somewhere else with that mass. There is a nice little T1 PD. will prevent a little bit of those thams from pushing forward, but there are Zuri being built to counter that as well. And again, the, re the rear guard air supply of Lincoln is on the front lines again early, so it's not a huge issue with the uh, strap bomber slash gunship rush or whatever the case may be. So he'll be fine for the time being. But of course, as the game goes on, he has to be very cautious of where his comm is. He doesn't want to be killed off while he's trying to micro his air units. And still, no T2 air facility online for Team 1. Uh, it's not even starting the upgraded either. So Team 1... I mean, going to be slow on the drop for that air. That might lead Team 2 to build the first bomber strat versus going for the just standard ASF lineup. We'll see how that works. It does look like Team 1 has claimed the entire northern side of the map. Team 2 has claimed the entire southern side of the map. The air player here for Team 1, Snog, does have his upper plateau. So five more mechs is in his coffers. Being able to scoop up mass. He's currently the highest producing mass player in the game. And on Team 1, but in the game would also denote that as well. Zebra Nog being forced back by some artillery. But he's more retreating in the sense that he doesn't want to be caught here and be killed off early, early on. So he wants to do it. just a tactical retreat for the time being and move on, which I don't blame him there. T2 upgrade has finished off. And Brito coming to join his teammate of Lincoln in the middle. Findeed running around. And Snog is also here as well. Looks like it's going to be a 2v2 calm action here in the middle of the map. And still, Team 1, Scorpy, he went for that distance build and hasn't pushed in through this little valley area. So it's given a lot of time for Ched to establish his facility. He could go for some artillery pieces on the cliffside edge and just kind of just lob shells over. He probably could actually put some Zooey right about here and just annoy Scorpy. Probably go after that uh, all those Mantis assist in the upgrade. And he's going for T2, so he's going to be more defensive than offensive. There is a little bit of an attack outbound from him in the middle, going after Brittle's position. Not really going to get a whole lot of uh, work down there, but we'll kill a couple of engineers. Probably should focus on the T1 mexes, but uh, killing build power is you know, not that bad. We do see some attack outbound here from SSSX in the northwest position, or at least the midwest position. 
He's building up a lot of units, thinking about sending him forward, but does send him westward, trying to intercept Zebranog, but uh, that's not really going to work out here for those orange units. And Zebranog about to get his first rank veteran C pinned to his chest plate. And we do see that gun upgrade playing very effectively here for Finn, going after a lot of the T1 Mantis. These T1 Mantis are not enough to kill off Finn Deed, and Finn Deed knows it. That's why he's continuing walking forward. We do see those tickle cannons online here for Scorpy, and a lot of... Oh, that, there we go. A lot of shots do miss just due to the fact that the angle of attack is a little bit too steep for some of them. Some of them do shoot over, but it's only when those units come uh, to the edge edge of that cliff. Gun speed and rage has been started hit for Brittle in the mid-east position. And he's going to lose this upper plateau. It does force Finn to be kind of a weird situation because if he continues pushing southeast into the you know, midsection of this plateau, it's going to take him a while to walk all the way back. So if Team 2 can come and ambush him, he will be f killed off essentially. So he has to be very careful with that move. It's not going for the range upgrade. Definitely in this scenario is the smarter of the mood. I was... Uh, taught on the best ways to go for either range or speed first it's usually if it's a lot of pressure go for speed but if there's a lot of kind of alleviants go for range I definitely concede to that there is a nice slow but nice kind of run by happening here for scorpio going all the way around it's going to take a lot of time if team team notices this which they can see it on the map they're not uh, unaware of it that team one radar is in range for all of that so Team 2 is definitely going to be aware of that. And maybe they just don't notice it or not. But uh, we'll see. Team 1 PD coming in to assist. And T2 as well coming in to assist the eradication of Brittle's forces and infrastructure here. And again, Findy has to probably walk back sooner rather than later. Because up here on this plateau, he is isolated unless a transport comes and picks him up. And again, in the northwest, it's very casual up here. Just hanging out. Just ecoing, building up infrastructure and all that. Nothing too pressury in terms of that. A lot of the action has happened in the southeastern quadrant of the map. A little bit here, but uh, most of it has been here. Team 2 does have T3 air online and going for that first trap bomber, as I mentioned. Team 1 is just spammed up T3 air tag. Look at that. They didn't even complete T2 when Team 2 did, but uh, they're going to go for that strap bomber first. And I mean, with T3 air online now for Team 1... Don't know if it's going to have as much of a uh, impact. The T3 Pigeon is still being built, so it's not that. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of time. Maybe going after a couple of T2 Mexes, at least make it the bomber pay for itself. Does look like all of the facilities were killed off here by Chad. There is, of course, those units coming into range. He will lose a T1 Mex, but he had built some units to intercept said units that are coming into range. We do see those Mantis coming in here pretty shortly. Lots of Thams. One of them does have a name. No veteran state, but does have a name. And Ched builds a T2PD. They're lining up one by one, which makes the engagement very, very easy here for Ched to, well, engage with. And now T2PD being distance built it up here to deal with all of these units here by Scorpy. That bomber is going after T2 Mexes. Does hover bomb there for a brief second. Tries to get that T2 Mex, but it's being shot out of the sky by those interceptors too much. And an ASF comes to assist as well. That bomber is killed off immediately. And I don't even know if it actually got a bomb off, to be fair. Um, no, I don't realistically think so. No, no, I don't see any T2 Mexes killed off. So that bomber definitely did not work out the way that uh, Lincoln thought it would. And Team 1 will scoop up that 1,100 mass, almost 1,200 mass, into their coffers. Regen Aura started hit for Zibranog. He does have the gun upgrade now. What that will allow him to do is regen his units nearby, keep making them a little bit more tanky. He is in the yellow. Looks like he has kind of had a couple of firefights in the interim, but he is at uh, halfway to two star veteran. CT1 bombers over the top going after Bob of these units outbound here for Finn. I don't think they'll go after the comm. Go after more considerable losses. There goes the bombing run. Going after all of those Mantis. Kills off actually almost all of them. Great placement here by Brittle's Bombers. Let's get a lot of uh, work out of them. And we do see some Interceptors trying to chase them down. But not really going to get there in time. Brittle does have gun, of course. And Lincoln doesn't have any upgrades. It's very calm here in the middle here between the both teams. We do see some fire-basing boys here between SSSX and Parappa. 
the wrap. He's going for triads. Would like to see some Ravagers at some point. It is 13 minutes, so probably thinking about going for that T3 upgrade short or shortly. We do see Chet coming in to assist his forces and clearing out these forces outbound from Scorpy. Scorpy could take the opportunity to push in, but unfortunately, even if he does, those units would be able to turn around and go right back the way they came and intercept him anyway, so it doesn't really do anything. It does look like some units are uh, running around doing something. Looks like they're... I don't know what they're doing. Hmm. But still, Team 1 has owned a little bit more of the middle for this entire match. And that does show a little bit with Team 1 sitting at about 50 mass more income than their opponents. But still, I feel like I'm going to just speed it up a little bit because realistically, there's not been a lot of just you know action consistently. We'll kind of get to a point where there is a little bit more of that. Missiles raining in constantly against the Rap. Rap trying to build those TMDs. Those TMDs for the UEF are not great. They, they really just aren't. It does take two shots from a TMD to kill off the missile from these Even Songs. But uh, you know, he needs more TMD. He needs, I think, some Ravagers, realistically, to just push back this line. The Rap isn't going to go for any upgrades as we speak. That shield is going to fall. The Rap needs to either assist in or build a second one. I feel like a second one would be beneficial. He's going to go for more TMD. I don't think that's going to be enough. TMD now going to be starting to be killed off here by those missile launchers. And I think I'm going to slow it back down. We see some action brewing here in the southeastern direction. Looks like it's just more missile launching going back between Team 1 and Team 2. Transport does get killed off by Team 1's... Oh, no, actually it doesn't get killed off, but it will land and then get killed off, so essentially it did. Those, hot, those Ilshis actually are EMP'd currently. They're not moving. And uh, if they don't move, they will all die. One has died. And uh, two have died, and all the rest of them have died. Definitely missed opportunity there from the Zebra 9. Missile launcher started here from Lincoln. Maybe we'll see him go for Billy Nuke. Not looking good here for Team 2, both on the Midwest position and that's really the main concern right at this point. I feel like if this dam breaks, it allows Team 1 to come in and encircle Zebra not killing him off. The team one, Team 2 is the rap needs to hold this position. Shield is about to be constructed. Kills off a Team D at the last second before those shields come online. He needs to force these missiles back, build some artillery, do something with this. We do see some counter missiles coming online here in those spearheads, but there's just so many missiles coming inbound so much. We do see those missiles launching now here, going after the missile launchers. They do get grabbed here by those asylums. Does get one through, though. It's going to be a while before they break all of those missile launchers, and they're being built quite consistently here from SSSX. Second shield is coming online here. He's going to go for more TMD. I hear lots of fighting going on, but it's mainly just these bombers flying overhead between Riddle and Finn. Nano Repair started as well here for Zippernock. He's going to be very tanky here pretty shortly if he goes for those advanced upgrades. But we do see some gunships going after some Titans that made it past the front line here for Team 1. They're going after those T2 mechs. They get uh, another mech, I think. Oh, yeah, they do get another mech killed off. They're going to go for one more. They've already killed off three of them. This will slow down at Team 1's SSX Eco. Do not get the third one, unfortunately. I do see some... No, I do hear more Titans. Will he kill it off? Trying to get out of range. No, he will not. He'll kill off a hop... Oh, no, he won't kill that hop light off. So we got five mechs. I feel like that is definitely worth the mask. Uh, investment for those titans and more of those spearheads are coming online and a lot of those missiles have now been destroyed here from team one so the pressure has been relieved slightly but now there's asylums online as well so could be a frontal assault happening here pretty shortly by ssx here on that midwestern lane and team one's scorpy has now taken control of the upper plateau and has now has five t2 mexes online Five, one, two, three, yeah, yeah, five. So that is you know, 30 mass income. It does make a difference. Team one is barely ahead. Team two has caught up a decent amount in that eco game, and still no one has died before 20 minutes. It's definitely, I mean, it's been a while, I think, before I've uh, seen a game that's had a 
well, no casualties till after 20. A nice uh, change of pace. But missile launcher outbound here from Lenkin going after those T2 fully ring mexes here, killing off at least two of them. I wouldn't be surprised to see more TMD be built here by Scorpy, but uh, looks like this one would be a nice target, and this one might be another one as well. Looks like they're focusing on TMD first. Definitely the best way to do it. Another missile outbound going for this mech. So Team 2 is getting some nice mass assassinations on the cards here. Team 1 is still in the lead, but Team 2 is, of course, uh, trying to catch up as best they can. Multiple missiles just getting pulled here. Look at, the, look at those. Look how many missiles get pulled from that. But some of them do break through, and a volcano gets taken out in the midst. So uh, less of those flares means more of those missiles get through. There they go. And those TMD are falling. They are not all powerful. They do a lot of work, but uh, there's only so much that you can do. And there's so many spearheads online. They launch volleys and volleys of those missiles. SSX is going to be pushed back here. Unfortunately here for him, there's nothing at this point he can do. Especially if Rap goes for T3, which he hasn't yet. But once he does, he can fully secure this position. And he has forced SSX to engage, but he's built some triads and other defenses to assist in those measures. And now Brittle is attacking Finn at the same time that SSSX is attacking. And we do see a lot of T1 Lobos being used as cannon fodder to just kind of force all the shots away from those shields and defenses. Multiple PD coming online here, both T1 and T2, and some Percy's as well, targeting those high value units of the Asylums and the Harbingers that are now all dead. The uh, units going after all the defenses that are not shielded. That was being one triad. Looks like they're trying to run by. There's also more pushback coming in from Team 1's Paragon in the Northwest. Zibernog being just kind of just battered back and forth. Can't find a way to easily defend. Those missiles have pierced the shielding and going after SSX Com. If he doesn't move, this could be a kill. SSX, you gotta move. Oh, he's in the red. Sub 3,000 hit points. Oh, this could be deadly here for Team 1. Team 1 loses this position here. And looks like the attack up up from Brutto either falls back or gets stopped. And yeah, that, there that goes. We do see Zebranog in the west being attacked by some Harbingers. He does have region or 100 hit points is a lot. But he's trying to target all of those Harbingers. He doesn't really have the hit points to tank all these shots. He is going to be the first casualty of the game, it looks like. And it's after 20 minutes, and there he goes. One of Team 2's 1,700 rated players is killed off and is now a 5v4 in favor of Team 1. A lot of those missiles, a nice little hook maneuver in that regard. And it is a full share game, which means that Chad will get that. I wouldn't be surprised to see, yeah, I was going to say the Rap get that because he's right there. It's a lot easier to micro when you're sitting right next to that base. And now in the southeast, now this is the quiet zone. More action is occurring now in the northwestern quadrant of the map with SSX retreating and Zebra Dog being killed off. Trying to spam up some Othams here is the Rap. We do see one Otham online. Trying to force back these Harbingers. Harbingers now focusing all of that T3 unit aggression on those units that are you know, being produced. The PD being targeted as well. Bombers over the top here from Brittle coming in to assist his teammate. And now we have the Rap back here. He's abandoned his position for the time being. He doesn't want to be caught unawares. And this position will be just annihilated here for Team 2. Huge, huge advantage for Team 1. But uh, Team 2 might have something in the, the clip to fight against that. No, just more air grid. Secondary air grid, love to see it. Probably would want it a little bit further away from those mexes, but uh, they'll probably put like right about here. I don't see any nukes, any of that sort of thing. So, so far, no experimentals at the time being. Somebody's probably building one, and I just didn't notice it. And now another attack outbound here from Paragon. He's forcing back Team 2, doing a great job of it. And now I mean, Team 1 owns almost 50% of the map, at least on the northern half. Team 1 still owns a little bit in the southeast, but it's essentially looking like a north versus south kind of game. All my units were killed by Song, says Zebra. Maybe he had some gunships or something came in and assisted. Yeah, he, he is uh, Aeon, so he could have gone for Spectres or those Restores. Probably Spectres, I feel like, in this, in 
this engagement. Percy's do come in and try to relieve the pressure. Wants to keep the T3 land headquarters online. I don't blame him. A lot of investment going after that. There's a ton of engineers just hanging out here. They'll be killed off by that Harbinger. Harbinger's focusing the T3 mechs, just trying to deny Eco. Team 2 now at 1.2k income versus Team 1 at 1.4. And at this point in the game, let's take a look at the game overall. We kind of talked about it a little bit, but Team 1 at 1.4, Team 2 at 1.3 now. Team 2 at 4 players left, Team 2 at 5 players left. But Team 2 has lost an, essentially an entire player's base of eco. That is a decent chunk to lose. They're not out of the, they're not, uh, out of the game yet. They definitely have a lot of opportunities here, considering they're a little bit just slightly behind the eco. And they are getting a little bit of gains here or there. But let me know down in the comments who you think is going to currently win the game. Please, if you haven't done so already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, of course. Thank you so much for watching to the, this point in the video. I really do appreciate it. And, of course, leave uh, any comments about anything and everything. I'd love to talk about this game, any other game that I play, or any future games, or whatever the case may be. Please, please don't hesitate to reach out. And, of course, if you haven't... Uh, submitted a replay to the email that is on my channel please go ahead and do so i do review those i have uh, gone through my email actually just last night and going through the batch of emails that i received so i am reviewing those as we speak and hopefully one of them will be casted here pretty shortly but again i really do appreciate all of the support i really really do thank you so very much we do see some sniper bots pushing against some of those missile launchers if the well i was gonna say if the sniper bots don't move then they're gonna get shot and before i could speak it it happened and they died one of those uh spearheads is super weak though a couple of the sniper bots could target those looks like they're targeting the shielding first trying to spam up more harbages for a si for defensive measures but uh now the missiles are now moving those tmd just can't deal with the volley of missiles constantly being thrown at it. Now the sniper bots are killed off and then they have full range to go after the obsidians. And SSX looking like it's going to be the wing point in Team 1's armor. Paragon again hooking around. This is definitely the weak point here for Team 2. Team 2 needs to be definitely aware of that. Luckily the T3 land headquarters for the Seraphim is still online here. So the Raptors have a access to that as well. Facility does go down. Engine is going to scoop it up for reclaim. And then trying to produce more and more of those harbingers for defensive measures. I would like to see Paragon come and assist with this defensive measure as well. Because he could easily be engulfed as well. There are some harbingers looking like they're moving in that direction. So good on him. Team 1 looks like his air might be slightly below Lincoln. He's sitting at 64. Lincoln is sitting at 82. So slightly behind but not too far behind. Why am I 1v3, says the rap? I mean, yeah, I, eh, those bricks are falling back. But yeah, I would essentially say he's 3v1 between SSSX, Paragon, and Finn. Finn's kind of, you know, diverting both Brittle and him, but I feel like Brittle could come in and try to force his way forward, but just doesn't want to commit to it just yet. I would like to see his, some of anybody's forces go this way to assist team one has a lot of territory under their control that's just sitting there hanging out they need to start striking some blows at that eco i mean i know there's only so many mexes you can upgrade but then it starts going into t2 mass or t3 mass fab and mass comp production all that and those numbers start to scale very very quickly so we do see an attack outbound here from bricks in the middle of the map again not really a lot of commitment going here between the two teams or the two players in this uh, lane. Nano is online here, and Finn isn't even on the front line. He's back at his base, just hanging out, going for T2. And we see an attack. I love this here from Team 2's Chet, using that same maneuver that Scorpy did, but sent a ton more units and a lot more support as well. And there are some Tickle Cannons up here. They are kind of having some struggles, some at some point struggling. But it does look like the Altums will retreat in the face of that brick wall, though. Unfortunately, here for Team 2, those units will have to fall back. There are a lot of Sniper Bots, and they will be shot. But it does look like the Sniper Bots are able to take out some of those longer units away. At least the PD and uh, Altums moving forward as well. Some of those Sniper Bots were killed off, though. There's not that many remaining. And uh, the attack was... A good tactical move, just didn't have enough firepower to break on through. 
T3 artillery now going after Chad's position. He is going for a chicken. And what does that say? The you are, oh, you are an idiot. Uh, team one, let's see, you don't have anything on the cards for experimentals. No one realistically does surprise. Oh, no, okay, we do have one coming out from SSX, okay. We do have one coming out from Paragon. That one's actually almost done. Chad builds the first experimental. That is the chicken that uh, he was building. And then Paragon builds his Colossus. I do see a crab thinking about starting here for Team 2. And a monkey, not monkey, Fat Boy is online. And that will force these units back here. So Team 2 will breathe a little bit of relief here in that regard. And then and that same attack has fallen back and regrouped. Percy's now grouping up, going after those Harbingers. Harbingers need to focus the Percy's, which they are currently doing. And those Percy's just to make sure they don't overkill those units so they don't waste shots. Killing off another Harbinger. Shields are down. It takes about three shots. It looks like to kill off one Harbinger. Not up. Not actually four shots. I think that was a missile. And those units here from Team One need to keep moving just because of the threat of all of those mobile missile launchers. The Colossus is in, coming into range. The Percy's going to meet that head on. We saw. I think it was yesterday's match. Just the ton of Harbinger. Not Harbingers. Colossi that were built. Just so many of them. What I love about this is that we have one group trying to get in from behind, and now we see the Colossus turn to face those while these ones are shooting from behind, constantly forcing the Colossus to go back and forth and slow the amount of time it takes, or slow the uh, amount of firepower that the Colossus is outputting. I feel like the Colossus will die here, but the Harbingers do come in and kill off a couple more Percy's as well. Great move here by Team 2's The Wrap in kind of forcing that Colossus to constantly weave back and forth. We do see some TMD online that's going to be killed off very very quickly here second Colossus has been started and oh <laughs> that's, that's gotta hurt Mex was just killed was just built and then just killed off and I think I'm gonna split a little bit just so we see what's going on in the southeastern section of the map that chicken is forcing its way forward but uh, it's uh, gonna be killed off very very quickly here by those bricks it's gonna force its way in the middle of that uh, little valley area and the comm of Paragon going to come in and assist himself. The uh, the Percy's targeting the P-Gen. Kills off almost all of those engineers. And then the Colossus will be targeted next. Paragon now going to be the one targeted as well. Second chicken is online here for Ched. He does have that to his uh, to his name. And I think the, uh, the it was very short-lived here for that... Uh, that split there, I thought it'd be a lot more uh, impactful. But Paragon dropping into the red just needs probably one or two more shots. Spectre's coming to try to assist, but uh, that shield is not going to hold. Once those Percy's fire another volley, is using the the land facilities as nice uh, meat shields here. Oh, can he get out of range? Those Percy's need to keep moving. They need to keep moving. Oh, one more shot. We'll do it. Oh, there's an SMD right there. Oh, if those Percy's had kept moving, I think Paragon would have been dead. Oh, they're going to go after P-Gens. There's a line of PD just shooting him, shooting them constantly, excuse me. Paragon's eco is uh, suffering. His calm is suffering. Everything is suffering. Dead, says uh, Lenkin. Don't... What? Dead. Don't know what that was about. And uh, unfortunately here for Team 2, they could have killed a player off here with Paragon, but... Uh, couldn't materialize it. Maybe he was just going for an economic kill more than an actual kill. But I, it's definitely a missed opportunity here. I'm kind of surprised that the fat boy just hasn't come up here and just started lobbing artillery shells over. That would be very, very helpful considering the fact that uh, you could essentially isolate this position, this position, and this position quite nicely. Go save calm, says Lincoln. Shed does have three chickens online. Artillery just raining on top of him constantly. T1 Bomber is coming in. Going to go after those trebuchets. Oh, they took a shot to the face. Did you see that? One of the artillery shells impacted on those uh, bombers and killed them all off. Gunship's going to come in and assist as well. Team 1, I mean, they got really, really lucky with Paragon not dying. He had very low hit points. He's going to continue to build his second, now third, technically, Colossus. I'm going to go for more mass weapons. Now that fat boy does push in. Colossus coming in. Going to isolate that fat boy. But a second fat boy is online as well. Coming in to assist the bombardment of Paragon's base. Tons of sniper bots online as well as a bunch of harbingers. 
Would love to see some asylums. There's a couple of AA in there, but uh, not too many. We do see that fat boy turning around going, oh, there's a Colossus here. We'll just target that thing. That'll work. Second fat boy's going to come into range pretty shortly. I do hear chicken fire trying to siege this little valley area, but brick walls are very, very strong. Brick walls are very, very strong. We see just one of them does fall. Second one is going to take a ton of hit points. I think they will break through, but uh, that two chickens will die. Tons of, I think those romantis were just annihilated. And that third chicken, I don't know. There's a lot of PD firing at this thing. They are tickle cannons, but they do, again, do some damage. And we see a lot of T1 bomber spam going after that colo that Colossus, that fat boy. That Colossus was also killed off. Don't know if that was the same one or a different one. That is a different one. It was a different one. But now an attack once again at the T3 land headquarters in the west here for the wrap. Percy's fighting off Harbingers. Percy's will win that fight most handedly. And now lines of triads being built to defend as well. And that T4 fat boy just receiving pain. Just a ton of pain. There's only so much that T3 Cougars can do. And this is why Flak is so important. Because you can kill so many units. Especially the weaker ones. Very, very quickly. At this point, yeah. Just bring the fat boy back to base. You're going to lose it. Snog just spammed up a bunch of bombers. Called it. What is this? Says the rap. Oh, it's called. Uh, Death by a thousand cuts. Is essentially what this is. And that uh, fat boy has been eliminated here. Team 2. Billy Nuke is online. Landing in the middle of those bricks. And kills a ton of them off. Nuke is launching. It's from Lenkin. And where is it going? It's going for this position. Trying to open a hole for Team 2 to exploit. SMB in the main base was not oh it is loaded excuse me this one is loaded and this one is also loaded so everybody in the east is safe in the northeast is safe except for uh, scorpy who is retreating from his main base there goes the nuke it's going to land kill off some mass but not a whole lot but going to take out a huge amount of hives kaboom takes out all of that production facilities and it does of course embolden those with bricks here from brittle to push on forward team two's position of the wrap being annihilated by a single colossus unfortunately there's now a second one online here for them as well fat we're gonna be isolated once again and now in terms of reclaim on the map we started with 13,000 and we're now up to 200,000 almost enough to build anything in the game it's a uh, it not a decent it's a ton of mass uh, give air and leave. I have billions of Sam's. Why is this? Your air killed my fatty. What? I don't know what the rap... Rap is talking to his allies. I don't know exactly what they're talking about. But, uh... In terms of that, in regard to that, I think he's annoyed that all those T1 bombers killed his fat boy, but... He didn't have flak. He only had T3, which T3 is good for ASFs and gunships, at least the T3 ones. Yeah, T3 is not really good for T1, but it does look like the Raptors control K's in frustration. He's like, I'm done with this. and done dealing with it. And ASFs do... Oh, it's, and it's nice engagement here going after the gunships, but it will be a very nice engagement here for Snog nonetheless. Everything will be transferred over to Chad. I think Lincoln might get this. Maybe even Brittle might get it. But Team 1 still has 5 players left. Team 2 at 3 players left. And ASF do kill off all of the ones here from Team 1. It is air dominance here for Team 2. And they need to exploit that sooner rather than later because their northern side has collapsed. Their middle, uh, some of their middle, the rest of the middle is fine. And the southeast is at a stalemate. One chicken dies to a crab that's just shooting at it constantly. Chet losing tons of value out of these chickens just having them parked there. Colossus supported by some harbingers going after Brittle's main base. That's going to hurt as well. This Colossus will die, but it's going to inflict heavy casualties as well. T2PD being spammed up, trying to hold that Colossus off. Vivinuk will land on top of said Colossus, trying to kill it. Now we have Hives reclaiming said Colossus. p -Gen gets killed off. This p -Gen will kill off all of these Hives. And going to target the other p -Gen here for Brittle. This is not looking good here for Team 2. They are collapsing. The Western Front has been their dem or been a weak point for the entire time. 
We do see a Monkey Lord pushing forward, being chased down by a Colossus. That Colossus will die, but it's in Team 1's territory, so not a huge loss there. We do see some Bombers incoming, trying to take out said Monkey Lord, but the Monkey Lord is still alive. Still alive and kicking. Maybe he'll deal some devastating damage, but the Colossus is now online, so no. No Omni. How? How, says Paragon, talking about this, uh, this Monkey that's right there. And Team 2 has a nuke, and they've used it. Killed off 49,000 mass, but, uh, I mean, it's been devastating here. Team 1, uh, is that a real number? 2.5k mass income? Yeah, it looks like a real number. Team 2 at 1.3. Team 2 is severely down in mass production. It might just be kill them with 1,000 mass and call it good here. This chicken just body blocking or body slamming into this crab here. And uh, it's not not looking good here for that crab. Even if the crab does kill it, which he does, that crab will die off to the ion stream. Can you please stop letting other units come to my base, says uh, Paragon. And he put it specifically against uh, SSX. ASF going to just annihilate that donut. But a lot more ASFs have been built in the interim. They don't want to die to the laser, so they kind of come in a little bit uh, softly. They'll target all the ASF first, actually, not go after the donut. It does look like the bricks are going after some T3 mixes there. ASFs, I mean, they're killing off all the other ones from Team 1 here for Lincoln. And that donut will fall. There it goes. So kills off all the ASF once again. Team 2 is in air dominance territory and is killed off an experimental. But it's on Team one side of the map. So it doesn't even matter if they kill it off. They uh, just can't reclaim the mass. Nice couple squadrons of gunships are online going after T3, sorry, T4 experimentals. The crabs gonna kill those off very very quickly. It looks like they're not focused on killing that directly. Don't know what they're going after. We do have some interceptors nearby, and some AA has been built in the interim to assist with defensive measures. But they're gonna just blitz on through. I don't know what their target is, but uh, they're losing numbers by the ones. Maybe going after mexes. I don't know. They'll lose a T3 mex there. Then kill off that one or that one. Lose another T3 mex there. Kill off an SMD. That's very smart because Lincoln does have a nuke, so that's probably what he's doing. And he's going to go for the other SMD here in Finn's base. That, the shielding will not protect that. There goes that. And now they're going to kill Finn off because why not? And then they're probably going to start getting Scorpio. All of those gunships, or at least most of them, are killed off. And then says there's another SMD right there. But they will not kill that off in time. I think the nuke. The, the anti-nuke will load. If Team 2 doesn't have a nuke loaded already, they do. It looks like it is launching. Going after this defense. position. And Snog can... Wait, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why did Snog control K? Hold on. Hold on. So Team 1 lost Finn. And then I don't see... Let's kind of zoom out a little bit, see where the comm is. Oh, he's right there. I don't know if it was a connection issue or not. But, well, I've lost air. So he just control K's because he lost air? That's kind of a dumb reason to quit. I mean, I get that you're the air player and you lost air. But uh, you could have come back. I mean, I've seen games where, you know, air players come back in the game. Chicken's still trying to kill off another crab. The, both those chickens will die. Nuke will land. Kaboom! Kills off this base here that once belonged to Finn. And now Paragon's in control of the entire northern side, scooping up the reclaim and all of that. Maybe we'll see a Paragon here for him so that he can uh, follow his namesake. I don't see any of those potentiality at the current moment. Emissary has been starting here for Paragon, so he's thinking about long-range artillery fire, how to end the game. And, of course, Team 2 has a nuke. It's called up 121,000 mass. Going to build a satellite and another nuclear nuke, nuclear launcher. I said, the, I said the thing again. Anyway. We have another group of gunships going to go after this position. A couple of Gunthers. It, I don't know how many. How many experimentals have died here? One, two, three, four, five, six chickens. There's one crab. That is a decent amount of mass. Cannot see how much the mod. 100,000 mass in this southeastern corner of the map. Most of it coming from Shed funneling into chickens. And I get that it's a thin corridor, but uh, I feel like they could have been microed a little bit better here. Second chicken online here for now. Scorpy 
Going after a set chicken. That one will die, unfortunately. Going to just die in this little valley once again. And team one in the better position to win the game. 2.5K versus 1.2. But we have seen games where the other team does come back, especially being down mass this much. But team one just needs to take it slow and steady if they want to win it, which they are. They're being, again, now very defensive. They're attacking a little bit in the southeast. They did a ton of damage here to team two earlier on for both the Rap and Zebra Nog. So, and actually didn't force the Rap to control K, but he was just done. So he just decided to leave it in the hands of his other teammates. But I don't know why Snog left. I don't know why. Besides a connection issue, which is frustration, I don't know why he would have left. But uh, he did make a comment in chat that he said, I uh, lost air. Which he lost it technically twice, but he was still, he produced a ton of ASF. So even if he lost there, he could have come back. Billy Nuke lands, taking out whatever was there. And again, Chicken just being berated by Krabs here. Krabs just ruling this uh, thin corridor, this little valley area. Three chickens online. Fourth one is coming online as well. Chet has retreated to his main base, going for T3 artillery. So both teams have one player at least going for T3 artillery. I don't see... Oh, that's interesting. And that's a way that Team 2 could come back into this game is with a Maver. I don't see a lot of assistance paid to it, but... Uh, feel like funneling it into another Stone Age is probably not worth it. Probably funneling it into the Maver is a little bit more worth it. Especially if you take out the air grid and you take out maybe the emissary that's now constructed. The emissary is targeting Lincoln's base. At least it... Oh. No, it is shifting in that direction. Yeah, it looks like he is targeting uh, Lincoln's base going after the satellite and the nuke. I hear chicken fire once again. Crab's not moving. Probably not what they should be doing. Another crab. Not another crab. Another chicken is dead. Another crab is dead. And both of those chickens are dead. If the crab doesn't move, which it is, it should be fine. It's just a lot of mass thrown at the southeastern corner and not really a lot gained from it for either team. And we just see a lot of engineers building some AA to defend, which is smart against any gunship but team two not focusing on the emissary that's definitely a mistake there team one definitely you know, i mean yeah team one knows about it sorry team two knows about it and team one i think knows about theirs as well no they don't they don't know about it but hold on i was looking at the wrong thing oh they do know about it okay they, they do know they might not know it's online but Oh, no, they, no, they would. They would because the symbol is there, so they would know about it. Chicken going to charge once again, but it's just funneling mass into a trough, essentially, at this point. I don't understand his play with this. Chicken will die once again, kills all the bricks off, but not getting you're not getting value out of it. We do see the emissary going after the air grid down here. Also some mass fabs as well. That looks like that. It looked like it was going after the bomb, or the, the nuke, but I guess not. There are some strap bombers being built. Second emissary is online, and the artillery here from Chad is targeting this position. One is not going to crack the shielding, unfortunately. They need about two or three of them. Probably three, but two could probably do it. And with two emissaries online, with the third one shortly coming online, Team 2, they need to take care of this position because it's going to be the death of them. I don't see any other emissary or T3 artillery installations coming online here shortly. Some of the air grid was taken out here. That helps a little bit with securing air, but Team 1 is being defensive. Multiple crabs coming online just to sit there. Team 2 needs to see the danger. I did see the Mavor was reclaimed, and then it's still being reclaimed. I don't know what he's thinking. You going to go for a shield? I mean, yeah, you could go for a shield, but you need to fight back in some way. Team 1... It's going to defend that emissary position with everything that they've got. The shielding a little bit is cracking, though, to be fair. There are more shielding. Third emissary is online. I just, I just don't know if Team 2 is focusing on the right thing. Second, Hubbathame is coming online. I do love that it's a little bit further away from this first one, so you don't have the cascade effect that normally happens. That uh, you can see for the emissaries, they're interconnected with one another. So if Let's say this one blows up. 
this one blows up, it's likely that they'll kill at least these two off. This one might be fine, but it uh, could be a nice cascade effect. So Team 2 if definitely needs to look into that. There is a satellite overhead, so they have one satellite, one artillery. That's something, but Team 2 needs definitely more to pierce those shielding. And besides that, Team 1, again, being hyper, hyper defensive, they're not attacking. They're waiting for Team 2 to make their move because they're sitting at double the eco at this point. Paragon at 1.9 thousand mass income which i mean makes me think he might build a paragon pretty shortly with all that mass he has ninety thousand mass in the clip though he has a lot of mass to play with which is one of the reasons why he's able to build those emissaries so very quickly the satellite of course targeting all of those engineers and the emissary not under shield coverage probably not the best idea there but uh, you know it's uh, it's working out he does have em engineers assigned to multiple shields it looks like trying to keep them online an attack from the northwest here coming on Team 2's doorstep. Multiple uh, Colossus as well as a bunch of armages. One Fat Warrior is not going to be enough. The Chicken is definitely not going to be enough. That one Colossus does die though. And we'll slow down the movement just a little bit. But the Crabs and Colossus who were waiting on defensive measures have, given the, have been given the order to attack. Second of them is almost online. It looks like the Crabs are going straight for it. And still, Chad was not able to break through this position in the east. Tons of mass just thrown at Scorpius front door. And again, one crab versus two colossi and three crabs. Obviously, we know that way it's going to go. It just immediately starts to reclaim the crab. Don't understand that idea. Doesn't really do much. Now the reclaim order has been started. I think I get what they were getting at. Just to grab the, the mass for it but could have waited until the thing was dead first anyway. second colossus is down in the west the chicken does come online thankfully for them so they'll keep that colossus at bay but it is in range of that fat boy the another nuke is launching you gotta target something and oh the base here for lincoln has just seen better days nice hole in the middle of it Nuke is launching, going after this position. It's not covered by SMDs, but at this point, I don't think that matters. Could have probably actually gone after the crabs or something, but the two Hubathams have been destroyed. Team 2 is crumbling. And Emissary Fire looks like it's going to kill off that nuke launcher. Strategic oh. launch detected. Another nuke launches, this time from that secondary... Uh, Stone Angel, and it's going for this position once again. Going to nuke the same one that he did earlier on. And that crab will be, I think, uh, looks like it's attacking all the Hubba um, those, uh, not Hubba Thams, but those, the Thuthams. But uh, Chad, Control K, is seeing the writing on the wall. Brittle starts his laser. Oh, a little bit too late to start the laser, unfortunately, there. And uh, he actually, never mind Control K's as well. Maybe that was Brittle, not Chad. Okay, I read that wrong. I did read that wrong. Look at me. And nuke will land. Kaboom! Taking out more mass as well. But, uh, I mean, killing off all that mass doesn't really do a whole lot. Especially if you're producing a third of the mass that your opponent is. And they're just infiltrating every single section of your main territory. And at this point, I think I'm just going to speed it up to two. I think we can see the writing on the wall at this point. And we do see Chad being killed off by... Colossi and Chickens. It's now a 1v3 game in favor of Team 1. Lincoln is the last Strategic survivor, launch, the sole detect. survivor here for Team 2. Launches another nuke. This time it's outbound for this position. There's nothing up there worth going for. I love this outbound here from Paragon. Just going to build a line of uh, emissaries. Still feel like he built a parent. Well, he's not producing that much mass, so there's no way he's producing. I mean, he built a a paragon so unlike his namesake he did not go for a paragon again haven't seen one in a long long time would like to see one built in a game but uh, just hasn't happened yet actually that's not true i saw one in the uh in the phantom but i haven't seen one in like the regular fab casts and that crab will be killed uh shortly looks like it will not kill off the comm but the comm just control case anyways he wanted to kill the crab before he left and there he goes. Team 1 wins the game. And I feel like for MVP, I think, I mean, I kind of think I give it to Scorpy. I feel like because he just constantly was like, I'm just going to sit here. I'm just going to sit here and scoop up all your mask and throw at me. I mean, he reclaimed 127,000 mass 
Uh, Paragon got 146, but I mean, Ched got hyper focused on this uh, little lane right here. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six chickens that are still here. And of course, a couple of crabs. And it didn't, it was essentially every two or three chickens that Ched lost, Scorpio lost one crab. That's definitely the value out of the crabs, most definitely. Obviously, there were bricks mixed in there as well, but still. I mean, that played a huge part in focusing Shed's attention all the way over here. And then we had Paragon coming in, taking on Zebra Nog, and then with SSX being able to take out the wrap. And that solidified the Western side being under Team One's control, giving them a huge buffer zone for Paragon to be able to build his grid of emissaries. Again, I don't see why Snog should have left. Again, unless it was a connection issue. I feel like he should have stayed in the game. He probably would have been fine. He probably would have actually would have gotten air control and Team 1 would have won sooner. But at this point, it doesn't really matter. Team 1 still won anyways. But again, that's my pick for MVP. Let me know down in the comments if you agree or not. Thank you so much for watching. Please like the video if you haven't done so already and subscribe to the channel. And of course, share this video with anyone, everyone, and especially your pets. And I will see all of you in the next one.